Hi, and welcome back to Merseyside, where we've had a very pleasant morning. We've got seven hours of energy on the scale here. But unfortunately, the sky has clouded over, so the demo that I was hoping to put together may well have to be um, done with artificial PV power rather than real. This is um, a bit of a rat's nest. This is the prototype of my uh, Revision 5, of my Mark um, 2i um, sketch, or the hardware for it. Um, it's the familiar original platform that I built with the breadboard, same triac trigger and all the rest of it. Um, the extra wires, well there's two sets of wires. On the front here I've got a couple of switches, one which was introduced a little while ago to select between normal and anti-flicker. And then we've got another one here which um, selects between uh, local and remote uh, because we've now got the ability to have more than one load, which is um, really quite an advance. So we've got the wires from that. Uh, the other set of wires is this uh, radio module, standard RFM 12B, uh, on a little piece of board, and all the wires um, plug in there. So I say it looks a bit of a rat's nest, but it all uh, all makes sense, and I'll certainly put a diagram on the um, on the forum. Now this is a standard quarter wave aerial, which you get with the um, the chip. I've extended it to double length because I found when I was working inside it worked better with half wave. This is um, on and working. Um, it is transmitting and it's transmitting all the way to the next shelf down. And here we have um, the receiver end of it. There's the top end of the half wave aerial. Bottom end you can hardly see. So this is a pretty standard um, sub-equipped Emon TX. And we've got some LEDs to show what's going on and we've got one of the other half of Rich's um, PCB pair, this is the trigger, um, and operating a little 16 amp triac with a little diddy heat sink, uh, which is fine for, um, for test purposes. So as I say, it is all live. Uh, I can demonstrate that because if I press the reset button on my Arduino up, hi up here, it'll have an effect on the one down below, and uh, what should happen is that the yellow LED, which is saying that transmission is being received okay, um, should be replaced by a red one, which says that transmission has been lost. So if I do that, pressing it now, something like three seconds later, transmission should be lost. And then as the um, UNO know, gets going again, resets, transmission restarts again. So we are live. So this demo is really more about um, the use of multiple loads, because multiple loads are a little bit tricky. Um, the fact that the remote load um, goes via RF doesn't really make any difference, as you see, it could be a wire. Um, it does actually link into the house, I was very pleased um, to find that a few minutes ago, that it, it powers uh, in, up into the house nicely, gets through a, a brick wall or two. Um, as I say, we've uh, lost uh, all sunshine today, so at the moment we're not generating any uh, surface power, so the familiar uh, switch here which normally flicks either fast or slow depending on how the sketch is set up and uh, nothing's happening we're getting 141 watts which is not going to do anything for us so what we can do to generate some power um, wrapped in reverse um, direction around my standard CT um, a couple of coils there um, which is just getting power from my mains um, wrapping around here twice once to offset the power that I'm taking from the mains and the second time to generate in um, terms as seen by the CT uh, a like amount of power. And that comes into this space heater here. So if I press the bottom switch I'll get 750 watts of PV as simulated and hopefully things will start to happen. So there we are, we've got 750 uh, coming in, that's on constant. It's my power but it looks like um, PV and something starting to happen. So what we got here is um, this is my remote load. Um, connected to my m remote load we've got a um, little mini extension down there which goes to a four-way outlet. I've got two things in it. One is my trusty 60 watt bulb and the other is a one kilowatt heater. So on our remote load we've got a one kilowatt heater and a 60 watt bulb which is more and the 750, which is over there, um, is generating. So this is going to be flicking on and off 
at the ratio between 1060 and 750 or something like that, which looks about right. If I were to turn the heater off, then the only load we would have would be um, would be oh, that's working right. So the only load we've now got is the um, light, and so that's on constantly. So the question is, what's happening to the rest of the power? Because we're generating 750 watts of power, we're using 60 watts here. Uh, where's the rest going? And the answer is that the rest is going into my uh, local load. So this is heating my water, albeit with my power, but it's demonstrating it quite nicely. And the key thing is that the light down here, which has priority, is staying on while the lower priority load, which is my local load, is switching on and off. And the reason why my bulb has priority is because I have a priority switch here and we're down. So the remote has priority. This is a feature that I've put into revision 5. So if I were to put switch over to local, then the light's gone off because the remote load is second priority and top priority goes to the um, to the local load, which is my PV heater. The second switch down here goes between anti-flicker and normal, and I think this is a really nice touch because sometimes on a marginal day you come in here and you can't see what's going on. So if I flick that up to normal and then go and have a look here, we'll find that we're flicking much more uh, quickly. So this is the familiar uh, normal mode for anyone who's um, been doing this for a good while. This is how things used to be before anti-flicker came in. If I pop the switch down to anti-flicker, then we go into a slower mode. Now this may not be as slow as some people's anti-flicker mode, but this is a new algorithm. And it's a bit difficult to explain on a video, but I can certainly put the details on the, uh, on the forum. But it's only got one threshold, it doesn't need any calibration, and it does seem to work pretty well, and it's very well suited to multiple loads, such as we've got here. So on the screen of Mark 5, I'm not sure how well this will come up, but we'll do the best. We're now in anti-flicker. If I go to normal, it tells me we're in normal and gives the parameters for normal. And if I go to anti-flicker, it does the same. And I've got local has priority. At the moment if I press the other switch, it tells me that the remote has got priority and the light came back on. And if I were to um, switch it back again, it will tell me that lo um, local's got priority, which is my water heating, and the little light's gone off again. So putting remote onto priority, which is probably more interesting, so we get the light on. If I now put my fire on, that's a one kilowatt. This is as we were before, so we've got 1060 watts of uh, dump load on remote, so this should be flicking on and off at roughly um, two to one and we should get nothing up here because this is of secondary priority and we're still getting our 750 there. If I were to increase this, this is a big heater, so if I went up to three, uh, three kilowatts then we would expect to some get something only like um, one in four. It will be off for three, on for uh, one because we've got a three kilowatt dump load and we're only simulating roughly 750 watts of PV, because the actual amount of PV that we're generating is a couple of hundred watts, which is just enough to offset the, um, the base load of the house pretty well. So if I went over to normal mode, as opposed to anti-flicker, tells me on the screen that we've gone over to normal, and we start flicking away like this. So if you like the action, um, go for normal mode. Most people, I think, now feel that anti-flicker is the, the best way to go. So, pop it back to anti-flicker. Um, but as I say, having the normal switch available so you can check that something's going on, um, I think is a, an excellent idea. So, that's pretty well it. If I were to um, turn off, let's um, turn off, turn off the heater. I got the heater off. I've got the heater fully on 
Now I've got the heater fully on. So turn off the heater. So we're now getting um, 100 watts going into the light bulb, and the rest of it should be going up into uh, here when the bucket has filled up, I guess. So pop this back into normal. This should be flicking away uh, shortly. There we are. So we've got 60 watts there, 750 being generated. You can see that there's something going on here. I'm about to run out of camera. So I'm just going to put my simulated PV off. And we've gone off. We've gone off. Um, we've still got transmission. And uh, that's really how the system works. So uh, thanks for watching. Cheers for now.